Hello everybody. Today I'm going to take you through some new technical gadgets which are, I've been working on. Uh, it's not always about fish on my channels. So today we have purchased a new ring alarm and I'm going to be talking about how I incorporate that into my smart home and uh, all the, the different uh, cool things I can do. So here is the box uh, which it comes in. Um, there are multiple different uh, devices. They're the, the main base station, keypad, motion sensors, door sensors, and extender. So let's have a look inside the box. We've taken it out the sleeve already, but this is what's inside. Okay. So structure manuals in here. And then this is the base station. So this is what will give out the siren within the house. If we flip it over, uh, you can mount it to the wall. You then have options uh, on here to connect it via ethernet. It's also wireless uh, enabled as well. Uh, button for pairing. So pretty straightforward. It also has a battery compartment. So it is powered, but if case there's a, a, a failure, then you've got battery as well. Okay. Then here we have the keypad. It's a, this is the, the Ring 2 alarm. So it's a improved, uh, much reduced in size keypad. So you want that somewhere near the door of main entry. Uh, just the basic buttons to uh, disarm uh, a home mode and away mode and then this also has uh, a, a cellular backup if you subscribe to the Ring Protect uh, subscription service I think that's around about £9 a month for us in the UK and that will then send you alerts if there's uh, a, a siren uh, going off while you're about to your phone um, but which is normal but also you can have other uh, third parties uh, set up there, so a family member or something like that, it will uh, call uh, to let them know there's a siren going off at your house, perhaps on holiday or something. Um, buttons on the left hand side, that's a panic button, uh, sets all, all the, uh, the alarms off, uh, same pretty much for the fire, medical one, um, is also uh, sets off alarm, but I know like the outside siren doesn't go off by default for that, but we can look at those settings later on. On the back, it has a uh, wall sort of uh, housing bracket to go on there. And what you can then do is uh, connect in your USB uh, charger and then it will be on all time via motion sensing. And we'll show that later on. Uh, but uh, also it has a battery in it as well. So you don't have to um, uh, necessary worry about getting a power source depending where you have it and that battery lasts quite a long time okay so then let's have a look what else we've got so inside the box you have a base station adapter so that's the power supply effectively for the main one EU plugs UK plugs contact sensor motion sensor, a range extender, which we've got a big house to pass the signal across, and some of the other accessories. So that's one that was in the standard box. We'll get it out and take a look now. Okay, so now we have uh, made the um, base station live, power socket connected in there nicely, and now we'll go onto the app to set it up. Okay, here we are in the app. First things first, we want to add a new device. So I will go to set up a device, select the security option, choose a good spot for your base station, place it in a central location where the siren alert can be heard everywhere. So I'm not going to put, um, plumb mine in just yet. I'm going to use that uh, uh, later on, um, but I'm going to connect to it up to make sure everything's working and then base it out where I need it at a later point. So, Follow the instructions, connect your base station to the ring app, wait for the LED light to light up, uh, press the pairing button on the rear, and when the LED rings top starts to spin, you find the base station. So let's do exactly what it says there. 
I'm going to be pressing the pairing button now. And I can see the Wi-Fi is now flashing. So if I'm my base station, it's searching. Found it, that's nice and quick. Do you want to continue with the Ethernet or Wi-Fi setup? So I'm going to be using mine uh, as Wi-Fi. This will now let's see the Wi-Fi networks within range. There's network. Fantastic. So sort of click continue. I can see now that the device is doing a strobing white light. So this is where you get to add some of the extras with the Ring Protection Plus. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now. Yep, need to agree to the terms and conditions, and of course I've read all those. Let's skip that for now. We'll cancel that. There we go, now it's configuring and updating the device. And that is pretty much what I'm now seeing on the unit, the spinning circle. And it's gonna pull down the update. Okay, looks like the alarm has pulled down the update. So you have an option here to enable your geofence, allow the location access. So this allows your ring system to know when you make to exit your chosen area to do this, set up your settings. So we can uh, do that quickly. Yep, looks like that is all configured already. All right, we can say actually, sorry, always, that's what we want. There we go. Now we can scoot back to the Ring application. So the Ring is currently offline. Let's have a look and see what's going on with that. So there's the first issue I found is that, uh, although it said it was connected and had done an update, it seemed to say that it was then offline. So I'm reconnecting it again. So now it's complete. So it says. Yay. Okay, so now the ring alarm is updating. You know, it said it was updating earlier on. So obviously a couple of updates and different ways of doing it. Okay, that's it now set up. It says it's been updated. I have a blue constant light on the device. And so uh, it had Alexa already pop up saying it's discovered devices because obviously Amazon now own Ring, so that's where it's uh, coming from. Interesting how it's already popping up saying the contact sensor is offline and the, mo and the uh, motion sensor is offline. I presume those are the two still in the box. Um, so I will now get on with uh, looking to add those. Okay, so here's a picture of the actual base station. Now that the update is complete, solid blue light, looks kind of nice. Now let's get over to the, the different um, devices. So like the little box is very, very smartly set up. Can you get them out of the box is the trick. So these are the door sensors. They're much reduced in size from the original uh, series one. And so you would then, um, as these are magnet uh, devices, on either side of the, the door or window that you're looking to do. Um, have barcode on the side. You can use a sticky pad or you can screw it into the device. Same on that one as well. And then let's have a look at the motion. So I'm use that one handed. Comes down to the other bit. And here's the the new version 2 motion sensor. Again, you have a uh, what certain ways of uh, mounting it via sticky pads. 
so uh, this one will require some batteries obviously because so will the other one we just need to pull out the um the, the tabs and those to start them off so i will pull those out now and then look to set up the app okay so let's pull the tab out of the dog sensors okay so straight away what you get on the device is a green flashing circular light and what i'm hoping to see i wonder if it might automatically even connect Yeah, some binging coming along. So it's still saying offline. And so let's have a look then if we actually say, oh, there you go. It's saying on, it is online now, but it is open. So let's connect it. So I've now got them touching. Yep, so there's no alert now saying that one has... Um, been disconnected so it's it's already come as as long as you buy them as part of the box set they are already there so uh, that's very easy uh, set up obviously if you have additional ones which i do have some additional ones um we'll try setting those up in a minute i'm going to quickly just disconnect it again so it's like the doors open there's the the, the alarm buzz and it says that the uh, door sensor is open and that's so uh, shut again Still saying it's open, but they are closed now. I'm going to just uh, pull it apart again. One, two. It took two seconds for that to send around and say that it was open. Doesn't seem to come up with an alert saying they're now closed again. That's the only thing I would say, but that's the way it goes. So, right, that's that one. Let's, I'll have a look at the motion uh, sensor so i'm going to pull out the tab now tab pulled out saying the motion sensor is offline i've got flashing green so now it's kind of saying all sensors have cleared that's good because the door sensor is closed um and that would suggest it's now picked up that device as well. Um, let's see if we can uh, see somewhere on here to actually look at the, the devices. Yeah, that's just telling me I must sign up. That's, I guess, going to be the annoying prompt to get you to pay for the monitor services. Yeah, so the motion sensor is just detected motion. That's because I'm sat in front of it. That's pretty quick as well. If we look at devices then, we can then see what else we've got. So there's some of my other devices already, but security, let's have a look. If we go and look at the base station. So what we can see there is it's uh, base station is online and we've got the sensor, the door section is closed and the uh, motion sensor is currently detected motion which i would expect it to because i'm in front of it so that's that's pretty cool i like how that's set up um what i will now do is take a look at the um, ring keypad and so like the others i will now see if there's any way i don't know if it's actually if this is coming pre-charged or not Maybe it's not pre-charged. Yeah, so I'm going to get those those charged up now. We'll try that in a second. Okay, so have a USB socket now, ready to go into the back of the keypad unit. It's a little fiddly. Right, have it plugged in. So, that's now saying, I can see it flashing away, saying it's looking for Wi-Fi. And I can see the battery is on zero, so that's why it doesn't automatically come on like the other ones. It's actually got a rechargeable battery in it. There we go. Ring keypad is currently online. Brilliant. That's nice and quick, so I can leave that on to, to charge now. Now let's take a look at the range extender. 
Here is the ring extender. Just looks like there are other units as well. Um, it's sort of built in in uh, in plug kind of style. So let's just uh, try and put that together. There we go. We're in. So that should just plug now straight in to give us a, a boost. So um, I will just connect that up as well. Okay, just plugging it, the extender in now. That's plugged in. Again, we have the same deal with the flashing light on it. There we go. It's all connected. So that's very cool how that comes all in the box, sort of pre-programmed. I suspect with my accessories, I might have a bit more fun. Uh, but I will have a look at that uh, later on. Okay, let's look at uh, some of the options uh, within the app now. So currently the alarm is set to disarmed, here, so you don't want any uh, interaction from it at all. Then you can easily switch to a home mode. So I get a notification that it is homed and armed. And if we want to uh, change that to disarm, this is simple. There's, there you go, disarmed. Lovely. Um, you get notification on the ring device itself it's in a red light showing that it's it's uh, armed as well. Let's see what happens when we go to away. Delay started. There you go. So everything is getting activated. So this gives you the time then to get out of the building. So I will look to uh, press disarm. disarm. There you go. Like the way you get notifications for that every time. That's really nice. So now what I would like to do is see how we set up the number for the keypad. So we can go in to look at the settings there. You can see that it's currently on charge. Um, power save mode, yeah, that's fine. That shows about how the lights uh, come and get displayed on uh, motion. Um, but I like playing chirps when you press the keypad. I think that's a nice feature. Um, and what I will now see down the bottom here, hopefully. So audio settings, have a look at that. Yeah, that's just all the particular device, the volume, LED settings, so how bright you want it, or your maximum device settings. Uh, so you can have probably multiple of these keypads if you've got multiple uh, entrances to your building. Um, there's the uh, identifier, let's look at advanced options, so we can remove the device, reconfigure a device, I uh, don't think there's anything else on there specifically. I'll say finish setup. Let's uh, set up your keypad. Yeah, let's do that. So where do you want to have this? I'm not 100% sure yet. Let's um, let's say hall. So you can customize the name of your room. Entrance hall keep. I like that. I like the sound of that. That's a better name than the random one it gives it. Next, choose an access code. Okay. Okay. So I've entered in my key code. So it's being created. Um, tap to add share user below to create unique standard access codes for each person. So that's quite good. You can then be able to tell who's come ho home um, at the minute, although I'm not gonna do that. So success, your keypad is ready to use. I'm not gonna worry about watching the video right now. Excellent. So what was interesting around that though now is I think I'll have a look at some of the other settings. So uh, that's good to see. So if we look at the base station, um, you can see all the linked devices. We can test the siren. Um, what audio settings does it come with as default? So it's not on maximum volume to begin with. Let's boom it up. Done. You can see the 3G signal there. That's actually not that great, but I think it should be enough to get out a message to us if there's a problem. And then if we have a look here, 
Yeah, so wherever you want to have it, advanced options, network settings. So it goes through EE, obviously, in the UK. That's good to know. Now then, let's come back here and uh, I suppose link device will show you things. So alarm sounding, two link devices. What, what devices are those? Okay, so I've got cameras, so it can then start recording, but also we have another ca internal camera, so that can then also set off a siren as well. Um, I'll leave that off for now. So let's test a siren. This is where everyone's going to come running. And I'll probably mute, a little, sorry, turn the volume down a little bit on your settings. I'm going to flip it over to a decibel meeting reader so you get an idea of what it is. Obviously, I'm very, very close. I'm within a couple of feet from the actual siren. Let's see what happens. So it said a maximum of 100. I think as I come off, it decides not no longer to do the uh, the test. But anyway, we're getting a maximum of just over 100, being very close to it. Okay, now the test only lasts literally a few seconds, um, so I'd have to set it off longer. But it's definitely over 100 decibels, being very close. Yeah, I can confirm it is nice and loud and uh, going to be upsetting anyone. Um, that's for sure, definitely including the wife. Okay. That's that one of the main base station. Let's look at the uh, the extender. So finish set up on that. Let's set up your range engineer. Let's, uh, yep. Yeah. So you want to position it in the right place. I think that's pretty standard. Um, I'm probably not actually, I'm not even sure quite where I'm going to put this one. Um, I'll just put it as another hole. And we'll call that one way as well. It's done. Doesn't look like you do any more than that. Um, and ring sensors themselves. So uh, okay, that's good. This is where you can set up if it's going to be uh, open, come through to your phone as a push notification and close as well. So you can see you're going in and out really from your room. And uh, let's see mode settings. Yep. Yeah. So, turning on the mode away or home, that will be armed. Chirp tones. Your ring alarm station will make a sound when the sensor is triggered. Can't actually hear what they're going to be, which is probably a little bit of a pain. Um, and the other things on device settings. So, again, we've got the name that you want to have it on. I haven't decided to have it. On anything specific, so when toggle on the contact, this will light up the sensor. So yeah, a little LED will just basically go off when it reacts to something. Uh, I think that's a, a nice little feature, uh, in my opinion. I'm going to set it to yes and yes for me, and then I think motion sensor, so you can get motion notifications as well, which I would probably be happy to receive. Exactly the same as the other ones. You don't want it, probably want it when you're at home, which is understandable. So just have that when it's moving on there. Test emotion. Well, I know the test motion is already working. Yep, so that's pretty straightforward. I just need to change the name of it as I haven't decided where to put them yet. I won't do that right now. So that I think basically completes the setup of the alarm system. I will now go and get it all installed uh, physically around the house and come back. Okay, so here is the alarm in all its glory. It's um, a reasonable size um, compared to most, I would say, external alarm systems. Um, that's uh, the width of it compared to my hand as well. Um, the whole system actually lights up, which is uh, which is pretty cool. Um, there's day and night sensor on it as well, so it will go off um, as you uh, want it to with the, uh, the daylight coming in. Around the edge as well, it will be flashing if um, it is uh, set off uh, as well. 
so pretty obvious and we'll get some videos of that um, later on once it's installed um, so let's uh, turn the device over uh, we have one locking uh, screw here uh, which, which stays in, which I always like, so you can't really lose a screw. Um, you have a tamper-proof uh, release button, so if it's prized away from the wall, the alarm will go off, which is always a good idea. Slide down, base comes off, so this is what you're going to install on the wall. Uh, it's got a nice little leveler built into it as well, um, so right up on the wall, straightforward. Then on the uh, unit itself, Obviously you can see the speaker there uh, for, for the alarm. Um, if we release the uh, three screws, which hold it in. Now these ones don't stay in, they do all come off, so try your best not to lose it. Okay. And then And the unit should then that way. There we go. And pop up. Then inside, we're left with three uh, Duracell bells, which come with the unit itself. Um, it then has one pop-up battery, um, which you can get one of the one of one of these, which come for the normal ring doorbell alarms. Um, or you can choose to connect it up via normal uh, doorbell uh, connection. Um, you probably won't have one of those outside, uh, so yeah, it's seeing a bit pointless. Um, for me, what I will be doing is getting one of the Gen, Gen 2 uh, AC power supplies, um, which are for ring doorbells to connect up to the mains power, um, and they then just go through these um, little uh, uh, sort of uh, grommets here um, connect into that one and it will be then always powered uh, but obviously if the battery of the power then fails to have some reason um, you have a choice uh, of either using the, the D batteries to power it apparently this will, will last I think over a year using the, the, the Duracell uh, batteries which come with it um, but obviously depending how often your alarm is actually going off as well um, but uh, I got one of these as well, uh, so that can uh, go in enough I am standing ears, and we're going to test this out. These that these will last. I've got to see which way around this goes. Connections on bottom left. There we go. That way. There goes that way around. There we go. Um, there you go. So now it is it is uh, armed. Um, so that will last apparently three weeks, which isn't very long, but if you're connected up to power, it won't matter in the slightest, so I would recommend it that way. So let's now go and get it installed. Okay, well here we are guys, it's uh, been a couple of months since the system's all been installed. Um, this is a picture of the ring uh, external alarm outside, you can see how it's uh, sort of lit up, it stays in focus. Um, not too over the top, but enough for you to bring your attention to it anyway. So I'm really happy with that and you know the volume of it has been great. The system itself has been fantastic, um, very intuitive and easy to use. No uh, false detections that we've had whatsoever. Um, so I've got to say, I've got to give it a ring on this occasion, a real um, double thumbs up from me. So uh, definitely worth looking into if you're after an easy to set up system. Um, I think you will find it money well spent. Thanks for watching everybody. Speak soon.